So when you consider that something like this plant has brought such enlightenment to such a wide range of interests, and by the way, Shakespeare smoked marijuana. They found that in his pipes. And I don't want to be sacrilegious to anyone, but not only did Jesus wear hemp at the time of Christ, and it, but he, Christ, in its original language, means the anointed one. And in those days, marijuana and hashish were everywhere. That plant grew wild, feral almost throughout the entire Middle East, and, and Christ was known, and there's much proof of this, to bathe in it. They didn't smoke marijuana so much as they put it in oils, and they put it on their body, and this was a way for coming in contact with God. And anybody who's had a, a truly profound experience would know it. So we went to the Supreme Court. We've asked the Supreme Court to say, end this madness, end this nonsense. There's no way in the world any Canadian should ever suffer because of this most beautiful plant. No young person, no old person. And that having been said, I'm going to be protesting tomorrow night uh, at 420 in front of the police department, so wish me well. But that's not even why I came. I didn't actually come to speak about marijuana today because I'm doing something really, really, really fascinating. And it's what I really want to tell you about. And it still says green, so that's good. And I've, uh, I've got a cure for drug addiction. Now I know that sounds facetious and, and awful and what have you, but I, in fact, I was on the national, the CBC national news, about three weeks ago in a big long segment for 15 minutes, and it followed me around as I treat hardcore drug addicts um, on methadone, on heroin, on morphine, on crack cocaine, on methamphetamine, and how I give these people uh, a very... Uh, large dose of an unusual plant extract. And of course, Wade Davis will be speaking in the days ahead, and, and he might have some familiarity with this. It comes from Gabon and Cameroon, and it's an unusual plant called the iboga plant. It's a shrub, actually. And they found that the third layer of the root bark, I don't even know how they would have found that out, but the third layer of the root bark has a, an alkaloid in it, which, as it turns out, a man named Howard Lotsoff, while traveling through Gabon in 1962, found that he was a heroin user and they made him eat all these roots and you br it brings on fabulous visualizations. Usually the Bwiti people of Gabon, they have ceremonies to use it to connect to their ancestors and to connect to the past. Drug addiction amongst their people is unknown so they have no known application like we have discovered it. But Howard Lotsoff, who later developed a PhD in pharmacology and, uh, and other sciences, he found that his drug addiction the next morning after eating all these roots was completely evaporated. He had no cravings, no withdrawal, nothing at all. He was stunned. And it lasted him five years. He later, uh, five years later, takes up a heroin habit briefly, but it lasted for five years. And so what happens, I read all this science, and I thought, well, this is fascinating. I wonder why no one's ever doing this. And in fact, that's what I have begun to do. Starting last September, I've been treating people for chronic and long to people who've been addicted five to 15 years. And I've treated 23 people. They take me about two to 12 days each. The methadone people are the hardest. It's a long lasting opiate. It, it's tremendously difficult. I have to give them two treatments about five days apart, but eventually they too are all cleared. Let me just tell you, all 23 people I've treated lives are much improved. Most of them are definitely drug free. And anyone who has lapsed has only lasted on one or two occasions, not even for a long stretch, but just simply one or two times and then they call us up because they feel guilty they call me up they say I used once I'm sorry it's not like they need to apologize to me but they what happens when you take Ibogaine I give you a concentrated amount and within about one hour uh, your, your withdrawal symptoms start to evaporate within about two hours they're completely gone which is the most remarkable thing. It's like an incredible detoxing of the mind, of the, of the body. And they see fabulous visualizations of what will happen to them if they keep abusing these drugs. And they see apocalyptic visions of their own end and a terribly frightening thing. And what happens is that sooner or later, throughout the experience, which, by the way, these visualizations can go on anywhere from two to eight hours generally, but up to actually 102 hours. I've had some people go four days in a, in a complete visualization like they're out there. But what they're doing is they're reinvestigating. They see their past. A screen seems to come down in front of their eyes like a movie screen, and images happen very quickly, exhaustingly. And they're very exhausted throughout this process. And they see all the, the decisions of their past and a lot of their childhood where they made these, these wrong decisions, they think, or where things have gone wrong for them. And so not only they detox physically, they, they come out of this completely free of withdrawal, completely free of cravings, but they get an incredible insight into their past and their background and why they are addicted. And there's something else I discovered too. Now the caution light is on. So here's a fascinating thing. I've treated 23 people. 
about one a week. They take anywhere from two to 14 days, like I said, two to 12. And I've no, I asked them lots of questions about their background and how they grew up. And, and, their, and all 23 of them, this is a phenomenal thing. When you think about the roots of drug addiction, and we often blame the drug user, well, he has this conscious choice, that sort of thing. You know what? I grew up with two parents who loved me. They were always home every night. I never, they never were away once. I never saw drinking in my house. My parents never, never even yelled at each other. I knew nothing of any kind of trauma or, 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 or disruption in my environment. I grew up a happy, loved kid. I had a great time. I remember only fond things. You know what? All the 23 people I've treated, none of these people had any of that. Every single one of them had a traumatic childhood experience involving the abandonment of one parent. In fact, in all 23 cases, the male parent is not there by age 8. From 0 to 8, every single male parent of those 23 people I've treated, 7 females and about 15 males, was absent. Now, Sheldon, my first patient, for example, he was actually born in prison of his mother who murdered the father after he raped her. He was born into that environment. You know, when you hear stories like that, and then Ileana, she, she was abandoned at age two and has been traumatized by it ever since, such that she's worried about her own terrible, her parenting skills, which she thinks are terrible. It's traumatized her ever since. She was on methadone uh, to just kill, all, they have this wounded soul, these people. These people who are abandoned, or these people who have these traumatic childhoods, and they have this wounded soul, and they use these drugs to, to take away the pain. A pain I would never know. See, I, I'm on the outside looking out. People often ask me, have you taken Ibogaine? I said, no, I don't even have the slightest curiosity. I don't have any addictive tendencies. And all I know is it does these fabulous things to every single person I've treated. And by the way, it's not illegal to do this. But the problem is it's not, a, it's, and I was going to tell you about more of my patients. It's not illegal. It's quite available. And by the way, I have a website called abogatherapyhouse.org. I treat anybody that can make it there. We, have, we want a blood test and a heart scan, but we cover everything. There's no charge for any of this. Everybody I know in every walk of life knows someone with a substance abuse problem. This is a, a wonderful miracle. You should check it on the website out in the ante rooms with our other sites. And uh, the red light's on, and I have to go. So I'll tell you what. I, it's, I was wrong earlier when I said more people are in jail now for marijuana than any other time in mankind, because that was 15 minutes ago. And more people have gotten to jail since. So right now, there's more people in jail for, for marijuana offenses than any other time in history. But I do know this. There's 23 people who are no longer addicted to hardcore drugs, and there's going to be many more to come. So, thanks very much. I'm wondering if we, if we took a vote, would the culture in this room feel that there were probably crimes out there of greater weight than smoking marijuana. Maybe next year we'll have a little device.